Welcome to episode 6 of KinFit. Today's our Labor Day weekend special. I'm Michael. I'm Tiffany and it is a cloudy day and we are filming at the King George Park in Westmount. So before it actually starts pouring again, let's uh, get right on to the news. Please. So what fit news have you got for us today? Well, I discovered a cool podcast, video Ooh. podcast. It's called Yoga Today, and they offer free daily yoga videos. Well, daily. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. And so for those of you who don't have the time or don't have the money to pay for yoga courses, or you just want to try it out the first time before actually joining a class, or if you're one of those people that already started yoga but want to go into something more difficult, this is kind of for you. I was looking through some of the videos. And like uh, it's a cert uh, she's a certified yoga instructor. Excellent. And they, each day they have a new yoga like course with a new exercise. Wow, that looks like fun. Yeah, and they film in HD. So for those of you who can watch in high definition, you can try to give that a shot. You can download from their site or watch it on Apple iTunes. Cool. Yeah. Yoga in HD. Yeah, free daily videos. That's exciting news. Yeah. Some exciting news for uh, outdoor enthusiasts. Um, my favorite place in the world. Mountain Equipment Co-op. Yes, exactly. That's how I feel about it. We, uh, they are having, we are having um, an outdoor gear swap on the, uh, September 24th. Um, this is a really, really great place to be if you are looking for um, more outdoor gear, stuff that you um, haven't been able to, found, uh, to find. If you want to get rid of some stuff, um, trade, buy, sell. That's all going on on the 24th at MEC at Marche Central in Montreal. Uh, so it's really fun. Is it going else anywhere else in Canada? Yeah, they do take place in other cities, but uh, I know the one coming up for Montreal is on the September 24th. Okay. Um, it's the, the best place to be, I think, because they do use the four R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rethink. So they're very environmentally friendly. Um, and there's, there'll be a lot of other things going on that day too. There'll be some workshops on how to take care of some of your camping gear, your clothing, <laughs> Um, there'll be corn rows. Um, yeah, corn. Um, there's some games and prizes to be won. There's also a recreational kayak to be won as well. So that will be a whole lot of fun. Rain or shine, September 24th at 11, Mountain Equipment Co-op. Check their website. <laughs> right. And in other things, uh, uh, an article came out not too long ago, about a week ago, and the uh, University of Montreal, French University of Montreal, uh, in Montreal did a study on concussions and how it affects people who suffer concussions later on, you know, a couple years afterwards. They tested about 52 university athletes and the conclusion was that the ones that did suffer at least one concussion, they still showed subtle impairments in attention and motor deficits, Ooh. meaning that, you know, they, they had their, uh, the signal sending for motor commands were a lot slower than people who had no concussion before. Okay, so definitely if you are a young athlete, and you do suffer from a concussion, please check it out with your athletic therapist and doctor to make sure that you don't do any activity before you should because uh, concussions, especially in young athletes, are they can be serious if not taken care of, um, especially because in the young athlete, the brains are still developing, so they are a little bit more sensitive to, um, to injuries. Yeah. So do take that seriously. And these were, these were athletes that suffered concussions years before, and these were just minor little deficits that they noticed between people who had and didn't have concussions. Mm. Again, there were younger athletes, university athletes. Later on, they said the study is going to be on 40, 50 year olds, just to, see, just to compare if they, they got worse or not. Okay, good. So, very important to keep an eye out on that. Yeah. All right, and last thing today for uh, Fit News it is pollen season, hence the stuffy nose, the itchy eye. But what can we do about these things? Um, of course, we have our antihistamines, but what else can we do? Well, first things first, check your pollen count before you leave your house so you are prepared. Today, luckily, the pollen count is low. But in any case, uh, if you do go out and you're traveling in a car, uh, don't travel with your windows down. Keep your air conditioning on because that will out the pollen grains. Um, don't mow the lawn if you have allergies because that would be bad news. <laughs> Okay, uh, try to get someone else to do that or keep your windows closed if someone is doing it. Um, at night, try to keep your windows closed as well so the pollen grains don't come in. Um, and when you're coming home from school or work or shopping or whatever, take a shower, wash your hair, change into fresh clothes because the pollen grains are trapped in everything. Okay, um, last thing that I thought was really, really cool 
was the fact that if you put a little bit of Vaseline on the lower part of your nostrils, it can trap some of the pollen grains. I didn't know about that. Yeah, so that would be, I think I, it's really, I think, worth it to check it out. Of course, it's not like 100%, it's going to stop your allergies, but if it helps any, trust me, allergy sufferers, they will rejoice <laughs> if it helps at least a little bit. Right. Uh, one last thing before I, we actually cut off here. Another thing I noticed, I uh, found out on the news, was that they now have pedometers for dogs. Really? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, there was a, a tea, um, in Charlottetown, what they did was like they put pedometers on dogs and they just wanted to see if that would motivate dog owners to exercise their dogs ah. more. And just to see whether or not that would help increase their own ex uh, fitness levels. Really? Because they don't want their dogs to be under exercise, so they walk their dogs more? Yeah, and then they get more exercise, so, you know, more exercise means, you know, like uh, increased cardiovascular, or decreased cardiovascular disease and uh, increased mental health. Well, look at that. Yeah. Pooch pedometers. Yeah, we got all of that. So that's it for today's fit news, and uh, we'll see you next time. So it is now September, and for a lot of you, it's back to school. But for most of us, it's back to work. Many of us who work in offices will know that that means long hours at your desk. And after sitting for long hours at your desk, you'll notice you'll start to develop, you know, stiffness, discomfort, and pain. So for today's fit tip, we're going to go through a couple of stretches, some exercises to improve, you know, to decrease muscle tension, decrease stress, improve your posture, and to avoid injuries such as carpal tunnel syndrome. So the first stretch you might want to do is for the forearm and your forearm wrist. So what you want to do is to extend your arm out, okay, point the palm away from you, okay, hold the fingers back, hold it for about 30 seconds, and repeat a second time. After that, you want to do the opposite. Fingers down, palm towards you. Again, hold it with the opposite arm, 30 seconds. The second stretch you can do is for your upper traps. Because we sit at a desk all the time, we tend to have bad posture, which increases muscle tension in your traps. So what you want to do for this one is to stand up straight or sit straight, bend your head to one side, hold it, for the, hold it down with the other arm, okay? Hold it for 30 seconds and repeat a second time, both sides. Now we talked about a pec stretch in our last fit tip. This is another variation to it. So what you want to do is, you want to hold your hands in your back, okay, chest out, squeeze your shoulder blades together, as if you want to hold a quarter between your shoulder blades. Lift your arms up just a bit, you'll feel a stretch in your upper pecs. Now you'll notice that you'll also feel a stretch in your biceps, so you're not just stretching one muscle. Again, repeat, 30 seconds. Last stretch you can do, if you have a chair at work, you want to sit down, maintain a straight back, neutral back, hips square. All you want to do is to turn up the hips until you feel a stretch in your low back. Again, two times, 30 seconds, both sides. Now, a lot of us who work at an office tend to have bad office chairs, and that can lead to a lot of you know, back pain. What I recommend is to get rid of the office chair and buy yourself a stability ball, also a ball, a flip ball. What's great about the ball is that they're pretty affordable. It's about 20 to $30, okay? They're fun to sit on. They're comfortable, and it, the reason why I recommend this is that it helps create that neutral back, okay? It forces to maintain that straight back when you're sitting at your office. So this can, be, this can help avoid, you know, potential back pain in the future. Now, some of you might say, well, if I buy a ball after I get up, it might roll away, and it might look unprofessional if you have people in your office. Well, if you're willing to invest in something more expensive, you can actually buy a specially made kind of like ball chair, an exercise ball chair. And basically what it is, it's an exercise, it's an exercise ball that comes with a base that has rollers, kind of like your office chair right now. And the ball sits on the base so it won't roll away. And if you ever need to roll somewhere uh, towards like, you know, somewhere in your office, you know, you have those rollers and you can also have fine ones with a little backrest. Now these can be generally more expensive. The cheapest one I found was about $90 US, and the most expensive one was $169 Canadian. The best site that I found that you can get a really good one is at Discovery Channel. Okay, We'll have the link to, uh, on our show notes, but that one's about $90. It comes with a 55 centimeter diameter ball that sits on a base with rollers, and it has a little bit of backrest that helps maintain that neutral back. And, but... If you can't afford something that expensive, a cheaper alternative is to get a ball very similar to this one, 
but it has little rubber pegs at the bottom. Those are about the same price, $20 to $30. And all it is, it's just, it just sits in one place, so when you get up from the ball, it won't roll away. Now, if you're wondering about the size, well, if you're between 5 feet to 6 feet, something between 65 centimeters to 75 centimeters in diameter should be fine. But you want to make sure, okay, after you inflate the ball, make sure that your thighs are parallel to the ground. You're not sitting too low, sunken too low, where you're, where you're past your knees, okay? And you're not too high up on the ball. So something where your legs are basically bent at 90 degrees. So those are one way, one way you can avoid back pain and to increase your posture. And uh, that's it for today's fit tip. We'll see you next time. So on today's information, we're going to talk about back to school tips for balanced eating. Yes, I know it's that time of year. Back to school. Oh well. That means it's time for good lunches. Okay, because that's our biggest problem is eating balanced meals. And um, it's hard for students because we're always running around and going to class, waking up early, no time to eat. No, you have time to eat. So this is what we're going to talk about today. So first things first, always eat breakfast. When you roll out of bed, I don't care, 6 in the morning, whatever it is, eat something. Peanut butter sandwich could be anything, but it's really, really important to have something to eat before um, you go to class or whatever it is because that's going to kickstart your day, kickstart your metabolism, get you going, get your brain functioning because that's what we go to school for, right? So that's uh, the first thing. The second thing is um, let's start making our lunches because eating out all the time is really hard for our wallets and it's also not so great for our healthy eating. So what I would recommend to help make lunches more fun is to get a very cool lunch bag. Yes, I know. Um, my, my lunch bag is very cool. It's uh, actually, it's thermal insulated, so it keeps all my cold stuff cold and my hot stuff hot. Um, so that's going to be fun. Um, so when you make your lunches, what are you going to do? It's as creative and free as you want it to be. You don't have to be stuck making peanut butter sandwiches all the time. Although, you know, once in a while, that emergency PBJ sandwich is a lifesaver. Uh, but in any case, uh, mix it up a little bit. You don't have to, to do all the same stuff all the time. Like what I like to do is um, use some pumpernickel bread because that is really fun. And that way you can also, in other words, you can also use different things like wraps, uh, tortilla wraps and stuff to make it a little bit different so it's not monotonous all the time. Um, but if you want to say prepare on the weekend before, before school, uh, roast the whole chicken. You can use that during the whole week. Uh, making salads, chicken salads, uh, chicken sandwiches, anything you want. So if you actually prepare a little bit beforehand, it makes the night before so much easier to prepare. So you're not running around like a chicken without a head. Um, and it, that way you get to eat proper, you know? So it also helps if you, say, make a vegetable chili on the weekend. You could freeze that in single servings and take that with you during the day. So it could defrost during the day. So that's a good tip as well. I, I like to use that one. Um, Another thing is stock up on your fruits and vegetables. Remember those? Uh, if you have your portable fruits and vegetables, you can take them anywhere. You can have your banana on the metro, or you can have your orange in class. Um, if you want to have those all together and make it really quick, what I like to do is actually throw it all into a blender, some orange juice, a banana, a couple of uh, peaches, some peaches, okay? And make a really, really nice smoothie. You get three or four servings of your fruit right away. Um, make them the night before or, or fresh in the morning. Put them in your reusable water bottle, okay? And then take it with you so you can have that during the day. Or if you want, like I do, I usually take a weekend and make a, a big batch, freeze it all in water bottles, and take them with me so that they defrost during the day and I'll be, I'll be set. Okay, so those are really quick tips to do and make sure you don't go like hours and hours without eating. Um, if you have to get those, like uh, the granola bars, the ones a little bit higher in fiber if you can find, not the sugary ones with the marshmallows, okay? Um, those, those are great because you don't want to be ca uh, caught in class starving. So, cool lunch bag, reusable water bottle, okay? Um, fruits and vegetables, pumpernickel bread, mix it up, have a fun and creative lunch because there's nothing better than to break up your day with a really, really fun lunch. Okay, so that'll be it for today's integration. So this wraps up another episode of KinFit. It's kind of getting really cold, but I guess this is helping us acclimatize for the winter shoot.
I had to pull out my fingerless mittens, so it's chilly. <laughs> Anyhow, please check back our show notes for all those websites that we want you to check out, some links and other tips that we think will be useful for you. And if you have any questions, ideas, or suggestions you want to make, just email them to us at info at kinfit.tv. Mm-hmm. Big thank you once again goes to Timmy, our cameraman, and Amanda, our production assistant. And hey, hey, Mike. hey, Ted. Hey, we've been looking for you all day. Where were you? I was here since the beginning. What? Anyhow, anyhow, remember, don't quit. Stay fit. <laughs>